Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about the 2018 gear predictions. Now, this is basically my predictions based on the information or the, the product that I've seen through 2017. Where do I think it will continue to go in 2018? Now, these videos are fun because when I go to the NAMM show, we can kind of confirm some of these, uh, these ideas. So let's get into it. First, we're going to talk about pedals. Where I think pedals are going to go in 2018 is you're going to see a lot of deluxe pedals. In other words, a lot of pedals that are the, 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 the top selling product from a company, but done up bigger and better. In other words, you know, have to add a channel, add more features. You're seeing a lot of this uh, lately, um, taking something to the next level. And I think that's where I think a lot of companies are thinking of going. Where 2017 and 16 brought a lot of shrinking, you know, make that pedal smaller. I think towards the mid end of 2017 and now into 2018, you will see it just get bigger and more deluxe. And I really think that's where you're going to see a lot of stuff, especially in the main, uh, the kind of main middle stream and expensive pedals. And the inexpensive pedals, I think we're going to see a lot more knockoffs kicking out. I think we're going to see a lot of companies taking advantage of uh, the fact that some pedals did really well. And let's go ahead and jump on that bandwagon. And in amplifiers, I think small amplifiers are still going to be the trend. I think you're going to see lots of small amplifiers in 2018. More micro versions of the amps you love. And streamlined and uh, better. Because the competition is getting more fierce. The truth is, you don't have to look far when you go to your local guitar center, music store. It doesn't matter where you are on the planet Earth. You're noticing less and less amplifiers on display. Amplifiers are becoming less and less of a market share because the fact that guitar players will buy 10 guitars but only one or two amplifiers. And add on top of that so many things now with the Axe Effects, the Kempers, uh, the, the computers, everything that there's a competition now for an amplifier. Uh, even if you're a live performer, those things are competitive products. So you're noticing that the manufacturers are really struggling to keep those amplifier lines uh, pretty, you know, kind of extreme and huge with 20 different pieces in this lineup. You're noticing it shrinking down more and more. The other thing about that is you're seeing a lot of manufacturers that had a middleman distributor uh, let that person go and distribute themselves. Now, when a manufacturer goes to distribute themselves, you'll notice they'll want to also, like I said, shrink that lineup. It's really hard to carry all those SKUs. It was a lot easier to do it when you had somebody else kind of moving that product in different directions. So uh, manufacturers will streamline that process so they can, so they can take it over. Guitars. Well, what's going to happen in guitars? Uh, here's what I think is going to happen in guitars. I think you're going to see even more brands of guitars than you've ever seen before. It seems like they're they're the new pedal. In other words, there's a new guitar brand almost every month. It feels like I, I'm like I've, there's a brand of guitars I've never heard of. But more importantly, what I really think is going to happen is on the inexpensive guitars. And I want inexpensive. I don't mean student grade instruments. I just mean the more affordably priced instruments. The the sub $1,000 price instrument world, I think you're going to see a lot of them get tricked out. I think that's going to be the new trend. Taking guitars, and instead of making you a you know a really good fit and finish guitar, they're going to, since they got that trick down, they know how to kind of get guitars feeling right now. I think you're going to start seeing titanium parts, um, you know, high-end uh, pickups, high-end tuning keys, high-end electronics, extra features shoved in. You know, uh, even more stuff, stuff that you you used to not get unless you really spent a lot of money. So I think there's going to be a, like a little bit of sh uh, shock when it comes to that. You're going to see a lot of guitars that just are tricked out to to no end. In other words, because I think the companies, as they're fighting for this market share, realize that you are buying those mid price guitars and tricking them out. They're thinking, hey, we do that. We'll have competitive edge on the on the uh, the next guy. So I think you're going to see a lot of companies just tricking out the guitars already. And the last thing I think you're really going to see on the guitar front is an alignment of artists. In other words, you're going to notice the artists are not going to be as loyal to the brands they were and probably start separating to different brands or uh, their own brands. And the reason is, is because as guitar sales get kind of harder to, to get and as the market gets more competitive, those artists really are not making a lot of money. But that's not the key. The key is they don't have a whole lot of control and they're not making a lot of money. At some point, you want one or both to work out. You want to make a good revenue stream off this and you want to have something you're you're very excited about. So I think a lot of the artists are saying, hey, I'm going to find companies that I can achieve that with or I'll just do it on my own. And I've seen more and more of that as well. 
Now last, I'm sure everybody's curious, uh, you know, if we're going to do predictions, what about the retail market? What is it? What do I think is going to happen? Well, I really think uh, a lot of things are going to be changing. One of the issues that I've seen recently when I go in and I'll just talk about Guitar Center is that when you go to Guitar Center uh, and I've been to like 10 of them uh, in four states. In the last six months, I've been to the ones in Tennessee, uh, a, a, a half a dozen of them in California, uh, some in Nevada, and uh, and of course some in Arizona. So that's a good, you know, that's four different states. And what I noticed was a really alarming trend at all the guitar centers. They carry three brands, it feels like. I walk in, it's like they have for guitars, they had Epiphone Gibson, which is essentially one brand. Squire Fender, which is essentially one brand. Jackson, which was an odd choice over a lot of other brands, but I think that's mostly because it's connected to Fender, and that's it. So that's really just the Fender brand again. And then a smattering, just a little bit of their Mitchell brand, which is fine, and a little bit of like a couple Schecters, a couple music bands, just a couple of everything. No real sense of loyalty from them to any of those manufacturers. No way to say, hey, we back this brand by putting a row of these in the store. The only guitars they seem to be really putting any kind of loyalty towards are the Gibson Fender guys. And the problem with that is when you visit a lot of stores, you start seeing the same guitars, you kind of you gotta get fatigued on looking at the same stuff. Amplifier lines the same way. You saw the Fender amps, which are fantastic. There's nothing wrong with that. But then you saw some orange, a couple line sixes, and maybe some katanas and some... I don't even know what else. I think that's it. Everything else is like a smattering. But really, same thing. Two or three brands. For a super chain of stores, it seemed really interesting. Mom and Pops, I'm noticing the same thing. A thinning down of the brands. And you really you really see that. Uh, I think some of the best Mom and Pop shops I've been in in the last year walked in and there was just brands I'd never seen before. And although that used to be a bad thing for the, the retailer because it's hard to sell the off-brands. And nowadays, in a world where I can get anything online... I just want to be able to touch something that's unique and try something that's really cool. Uh, I don't really need to touch another um, Made in Mexico Strat or an Epiphone Les Paul. I got the sense of what they are. Now, obviously, these are just my thoughts, but really I'm interested in what you guys think because collectively, as a community, you're going to be way smarter than me and have way more access to information than I could even think of. Um, so I want to hear your thoughts. This is a perfect, this is a perfect video. For 2018, tell me either what you think is going to happen next year or what you're seeing happening next year. You know, what brands have excited you in 2017 you think they're just going to take off in 2018? What brands do you think really kind of missed the boat? All right, guys. So this is the last video of 2017. So I just want to say Happy New Year. And uh, we'll talk next year. And until next time, know your gear. <laughs>